evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. This is your host, bidding you welcome to another little jam session behind the squeaking door. We're introducing a new kind of music. It's called Swing and Slay. And believe me, it really sends you straight to the gallows. <laughs> What's that? Oh, you have a friend who wants to join. Why, certainly. All he has to do is tear off the top of a clue and send it to the Spook of the Month Club. We'll call for him. <laughs> Tonight's Inner Sanctum Mystery, Don't Dance on My Grave, was written by Emil Tepperman and stars Charlotte Holland in the role of Julia with Arnold Moss as Stephen. Now, oh. are you in the mood for a tale of madness and mystery? Hmm? Good. The setting for our story tonight is a great old house sitting on the crest of a gentle slope where it overlooks the countryside. Usually, in the sunlight, it's quaint and beautiful. But now, in the middle of the night, it's shrouded in darkness. There's no light in any window. But in the south bedroom, there, facing the garden, a young woman sleeps, unrestfully. Her sleep is disturbed by strange, terrifying dreams. Her name, Julia Martell. She's only been married a year. But the shadow of fear cares not for its cause. Am I sleeping or waking? Is this a dream or reality? How can I tell? There's no other way. <laughs> we'll have to dig a grave and bury her. It's Stephen talking, my husband Stephen. What you saying? Dig a grave and bury me? No, no, he can't. He can't. She's sleeping now. Let's do it quickly before she wakes. Hurry, Stephen. We'll dig the grave in the garden. It's my sister-in-law, Caroline. She hates me. I must wake up. I must. I mustn't hide in my dreams. What was it Dr. Krauss used to tell me at the sanitarium? Old, hateful Dr. Krauss. You were not ready to leave the sanitarium, Mrs. Martell. Mm -hmm. Your body is healthy, but your mind is sick. Your troubles are all in your mind. Seek shelter from life and sleep. Your mind is sick, my dear. I'll stand on your grave and laugh. <laughs> Dig a grave. The dream, I must have had a dream. A terrible dream. Stephen and Carolyn and Dr. Krauss all mixed up something dreadful. But I can't remember what the... What's that noise coming from the garden? Like someone digging. I'd better wake Stephen. Stephen. Stephen, wake up. There's, there's someone in the garden. She... She's not here. None is there. Um... He's left me alone in the middle of the night. They're digging. Someone's still digging in the garden. I've got to see. So dark. No moon, but I can see them digging in the garden. It's Stephen. Stephen and his sister Caroline. Caroline, who hates me. But what are they digging in the garden in the middle of the night? What are... No. Long and shallow. A grave. My grave. She'll come for me. Come to get me. Put me in my grave. I, I, I've got to hide quickly. But they can never find me. Where can I hide? Closet. No, no, they should have looked there. Under the bed. No, no. My head is so tight, so tight. No place to hide. Oh, Julia. Julia, darling, wake up. It's 
morning. <laughs> Julia. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right, darling. It's yeah. only me. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to get back in this bed. Bed as usual where you sleep at night, darling? Huh? Now come, it's, it's almost nine o'clock. Caroline and I had our breakfast hours ago. It's a glorious morning. Suppose you dress, have a bit of breakfast, and then we'll take a long walk. A long walk? What's that, darling? You're frightened and you're moaning in your sleep. Another one of those nightmares? No, no, no. I, I, I'm all right. I, I'll get up. Stephen, did a- anything out of the way happen last night? Why do you ask? Oh, I thought. Yes. Never mind. No, what were you going to say? It wasn't anything, really. Why are you looking at my shoes? I was just looking at the mud. You must have been out last night. Were you out in the garden last night, Stephen? In the garden? Yes. Julia, just what are you driving us? I don't know. I don't know, Stephen. I must have been having one of those horrible dreams. Oh, Stephen, I wonder if I'm really cured. Maybe you brought me home from the sanitarium too soon. So it was another nightmare. Now, now look here, darling. Don't, don't you worry about it. I'm having Dr. Krauss out here this afternoon. Dr. Krauss? Stephen, you're not going to send me now, back. There's nothing to worry about, darling. It's just a routine checkup. Now, suppose you get ready for breakfast. I'll be waiting downstairs. Stephen. And whatever's bothering you, don't let it worry you. Just call it a bad dream. Just a bad dream. Was it really, was it really just a bad dream? But I saw them digging the grave last night, and then I fainted. Maybe it was a dream. Let me see. I, I was standing here at the window. It all seemed so clear. Where were they digging? Over there, I think, near the oak tree. But I don't see the grave. Maybe they covered it up again. I've got to go down and look. I've got to find out. Nobody in the hall. This way, the back of here. Must be quiet. It's Susie, the cook in the kitchen. She hates me, too. Always spying, snooping, reporting to Caroline. Better be quiet. She'll hear me. Open the back door carefully. At last. It's all on the side of the garden. Footprints. Footprints in the soft ground, a man's and a woman, Stephen and Caroline. So they were out here last night. Follow the footprints. Over here by the oak tree. Yes, this is where I saw them digging. Here. Here it is. The ground's been dug up and filled in again, just the shape of a grave. It wasn't a dream then. Any of it? Looking for anything special, Julia, darling? Oh, yes, but I, I didn't hear you come up behind me. Well, that's because you were so busy examining the ground. What were you looking for, Julia? The, the ground here, it, it, it's been dug up. Well, so it has. It's the shape of a grave, Stephen. Yes, so it is. Whose grave was it to be? And, and why did you fill it in again? I think you'd better come back into the house, Julia. No. Now, please come in quietly, <laughs> Julia. Caroline and I want to talk no, to you. No, let's go in my arm. You, you're hurting now, me. Sorry, Julia, but you've got to come in with us. No, no, I won't. Let's go You're with coming me. in quietly, <laughs> Julia. Oh, my arm. Now, are you coming? George. I'll go with you. I'll go. You've got to eat something, darling. Now, sit here. What is it to be? The last meal of the condemned woman? Oh, it's Julia, darling. What makes you say that? Oh, what's the use? 
I thought you loved me, Stephen. I never thought you planned to kill me in cold blood. Julia. Don't pretend, Stephen. I know that grave out there under the oak tree was supposed to be for me. But you must have changed your plans last night and filled it in. Well, here comes Caroline with your breakfast. We'll talk about it after mm-hmm. we eat Good morning, Julia. Some nice steaming hot coffee. And golden toast, just the way you like it. Coffee tastes bitter. What are you and Susan up to? Why, Julia. Julia has some strange idea that we that we want to kill her. Oh, no. Julia, you know Susan and I love you. Do you? Please, Julia, drink the coffee. You'll feel different after you've had it. I brewed it myself. Good and strong. Well, you like it. You brewed it? What's the matter with Susie? Why didn't Susie make my breakfast? I heard her in the kitchen before. Well, why don't you answer? Uh, that wasn't Susie you heard in the kitchen, Julia. It was Caroline. Yes, dear. I made the breakfast this morning. But where's Susie? Why are you both looking at me like that? Stephen, what is it? Caroline. Don't you know where Susie is? Mm. Nothing. Nothing. We buried her there last night. Caroline and I. In the grave. And at the oak tree. What happened to her? Her throat was cut during the night. Oh. Who did it? Don't you know? Try to keep calm, darling. Remember what Dr. Cross told you. Excitement is bad. How can I help but with the both of you? You, Stephen, and you, Caroline, standing there looking at me. As if I had cut something throat in the middle of the night. We found one of your bedroom slippers in the hall outside Susie's room. It had blood on it. Oh, I couldn't have done it. We will have to let Dr. Cross take you back to the sanitary until you're no, fully cured. Oh, no, no, please, please don't send me back to him. Would you rather go to jail, do you? But tell me one thing, darling. What did you do with the knife? What knife? The one you cut through his throat to. You can't find it. Now, where's the knife you did? I didn't kill her. I didn't. I swear I didn't. Sit down, Julian. Finish that call. No, I won't. We touch must it. have that knife. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I'm going Now, come back, back, Julia. We want that knife. <laughs> come down here, Julia. Trying to drive me mad, and you think I cut Susie's throat in my sleep. Oh, Susie, then. Get that pussy in my sleep. The window. Get this coat off. Something in the pocket. What? A knife? Even quarantine dagger, the one who gave us a letter off me. But in my coat pocket, how? Blood. Dried blood on the place. I did it. I did it in my sleep. Go away. Oh, go away. Go away. I'm so tired. I just want to sleep. Just sleep. Yes, I have the knife, Caroline. Don't come any closer. My dear Julia, you must realize that we are your friends. Stay where you are, Dr. Cross. 
And you too, Caroline. Not one of you is coming into this room. Julia, darling, Dr. Cross has come all the way from the city to talk to you. He thinks he can help you. Help me? By taking me back to that sanitarium? My dear, I will do only what is best for you. But first, you must give me the knife. Oh, Julia! Did the knife cut your hand, Dr. Cross? I'm so sorry I warned you not to come in. Did she hurt you, Doctor? No, no, Caroline. It's only a scratch. Julia, you must realize but you're not acting for your own good. Why, you're in serious... <laughs> serious mental trouble. So why do you insist on fighting this trouble alone? You're all so anxious to help me, aren't you? Well, I don't want anything from anybody. Just leave me alone. <laughs> you want to be left alone so you can go back to sleep. You've been sleeping all day, Doctor. Leave me alone. Sleep will not help you, Julia. Your dreams are no longer quiet and peaceful. They're full of violence and terror. Oh, no. You cannot find safety anywhere but with me. You understand? I can help you to cure the sickness of your mind. Give me a knife. No. Get out! All of you! Go away! Leave me alone! Julia, you've got to listen! You never opened the door to anyone. Oh, my head is so tight. I could only fall asleep again. I'll put the knife down for on the floor. Now, I can see. She's locked the door again, sister. Well, what do we do, Dr. Cross? We, we can't leave her in there with a knife. Stephen, I'm scared. Well, we must wait. I think I'll stay here overnight. There's a storm coming up anyway, and I do not like driving in the rain. Perhaps That's in the an morning. That's an idea, Doctor. Stephen, will you get the guest room ready? It looks like I'll have to spend the night on the couch in the living room. Well, it won't hurt you, Stephen. I don't think any of us will be able to sleep much tonight. <laughs> Alarm. Blood. The blade wet with fresh blood. 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 Stephen, Caroline, Dr. Cross. But how? I was asleep. In my sleep. In my sleep. Lock. She's still in the lock. Nobody could have gotten in. I must have opened the door, gone out. And... <laughs> We've got to find out. I'll take the knife along. Stephen said he'd be sleeping on the car in the living room, Dr. Down the stairs by bending the room. Well, Gary, you have found us on the couch. He's alive, thank heaven. My Caroline, go across the hall. Open the door carefully. There she is. Sleeping, she's alive too. I'll get you down the hall. Here. Got the cross on the bed. Did you see? His head. Twitch. His throat. No! Oh, 
Why did you get into bed fully dressed with wet shoes and socks? Julia, oh, dear, your imagination must be running wild. Stephen, please, please believe me. I saw her in bed under the blanket. She was pretending to be asleep. Julia, I, uh, I, I, I don't know what to believe. You've been doing such strange things lately. I'm, I'm asking you to believe that it was Caroline who killed Dr. Cross, not I. But how? Well, well, don't you see, Stephen? She did go out of the house, but not to close the garage door. She must have got the ladder from the garage and placed it against my window. Then she climbed into my room while I was asleep and took the knife. She killed Dr. Cross and climbed back and left the knife. And, and then the storm started and she got her feet wet. It would have been all right if, if I hadn't been awakened by the thunder and, and found the bloody knife. But it left her no time to undress. And when she heard me in a hall, she slipped under the blanket and, and, and pretended to be asleep. It's a very pretty theory, my dear Julia, except that you didn't see me in bed. But we could prove that very easily. What? I said we could prove very easily whether or not you were in bed. By looking at your bed, Caroline. If Julia really did see you in bed, then the sheets and the blankets would be wet and mud stained. Stephen! Shall we go and look? Never mind. I did it. I killed Carl. And this was Susie, too, and tried to blame it on me. Stephen, I did it for your sake. I had to bring you to your senses somehow. You never should have married this woman. And, and all the things that we... that I thought about Julia, they're all untrue. You had no right to bring her into this house. You're the one who's insane. I was insane to think I could change Stephen's mind. That was the mistake I made, Julia. I should have killed you first. But it isn't too late. I've got the knife and I'll do it now. Stop that, Caroline. Let go of my wrist. Stop that face, Caroline. I'm going to kill her. Stop Let it. go, Stephen. I'll kick you. Oh. Let's go. Now, come back here, Junior. I'll catch you. She tripped and fell on the right. Caroline. Slade. Right under a heart. Oh, Rest your hand, I'm sure you're darling. The nightmare is over. Nightmare is over. But I'm going to miss Caroline. You know, she was a pretty keen customer, that Caroline. Nothing dull about her. No, sir. In fact, I'd say she was the knife of the party. The only trouble was she didn't know when to stop. Mm-hmm. Good night. Pleasant dreams. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.